Welcome, welcome to uh, Daily Prayer here at St Paul's Banbury. Um, my name is Dan McGowan and it's great that you can join us on Maundy Thursday when the last Passover became the first Lord's Supper. And I'm going to begin by saying the collect for today. Let's pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let me lead us in a few verses of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Well, this week we've been looking at the Gospel of John and his eyewitness account of the days leading up to the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're at the end of chapter 13 and we are at the Last Supper. And I'm going to read from verse 18. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly I say to you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me, and whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he had spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him and asked Jesus to whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it, it, was, it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Let me pray. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Father, please, as we look at your word now, teach us and pray that you will change us. 
that we would glorify you. Amen. Well, yesterday I was chatting to some clergy colleagues and was able to reflect that in these difficult days of darkness we're all finding ourselves in, there is blessing and no small amount of it. Could it be that God is Lord of the darkness as well? Well, in our passage this morning, we are at table with the Lord Jesus and his disciples. It is the Last Supper, the night before Calvary, and once again, Jesus demonstrates his total control of events. Although we read of Jesus being handed over, chapter three, verse three of chapter 13 says, his sovereign father has put all things into Jesus's hand. And now verse 18, he knows his own. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Psalm 41, he who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. Lifting your heel against someone, showing them the sole of your foot was a great offence. And one of the twelve will act treacherously. But this is not news to Jesus. Verse 19, I'm telling you this now before it takes place, that when it is, does take place, you may believe that I am he. Jesus is uncovering the traitor ahead of time to provide further evidence of his own nature. I am he. Jesus, Yahweh in the flesh, the word who brings life and the one who is able to be the object of their faith. He is in total control. Even Satan's devious planning as being one of the 12 betraying Jesus is actually serving Jesus's exaltation, his glory. Even Jesus's greatest enemy is doing his bidding. Jesus is, I am. And that is so comforting today to know that such darkness is not beyond God's control. But nevertheless, Jesus is not immune to the deep emotional pain of betrayal. Maybe you've experienced betrayal yourself. Jesus is convulsed by it. He's in turmoil within. Isaiah 53 says he is a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We worship a God who is not distant, uh, not abstract from us, but close and intimate. He has experienced the sort of burdens that we experience. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He understands. And so verse 19, Jesus teaches them of his foreknowledge that they will later understand his mastery over events. And they need this ballast of faith, don't they? As we need it too. Because verse 20, uh, they're the sent ones, they're the apostles. And this final evening, stretching over five chapters in John's Gospel, is all about a commanding officer instructing his troops to continue the work that he started. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you, John 20, 21. And those who receive their ministry, the Father of heaven will receive them. Anyway, Jesus is in total control. Unlike the disciples in the next few verses who are in disarray, Jesus makes that very solemn announcement in verse 21. One of you will betray me. And there is a stunned silence. And you know that, that each one is considering, well, is it me? Could I be the one? Which is a really great humble thing to do. They knew of their own weakness. Who is it? Well, Peter asked John to ask Jesus quietly, the one who I give this piece of bread to, the one I've dipped in. And actually to dip bread in and hand it to someone is to show special favour. Isn't that extraordinary? 
as he gives it to Judas, Jesus again is showing great love. It's a last chance to stay and be with Jesus. But the moment passes, Judas's heart is hardened and off he goes into the night. Some might say, but Judas was among the inner circle for three long years. How could that be? How could he do that? And that can create some anxiety in us. But it has always been the case. In every church, in every age, weeds have grown up amongst the wheat. Only Jesus can see the true heart within us. But as in Judas's day, Nevertheless, God will always see his plans through. And today he will continue to grow his church and bring things to completion. It does hurt when we come across it, but we must not be surprised when we find modern Judases. And you and I? Well, we're so susceptible to sin. And so we continue to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. But here Satan is having his day. Or is he? For it is Jesus who makes the command in verse 27. What you are going to do, go and do it quickly. He sends Judas away. Remember, all things have been given to Jesus by his father. He remains in total control. So Jesus not only knows our griefs and sympathises with them, which is so comforting to know. In addition, so comforting is that our griefs are not beyond his control. As Jesus, Judas departs, we're told it was night. Even the darkness, this evil that's enveloping Jerusalem, on this Passover festival, even that is under Jesus's mastery. In the same way, the darkness that we face, the darkness that threatens our daily lives, is not beyond Jesus. Perhaps we're haunted by darkness in our past we don't seem to be able to shake free from. Entrust it to me, says Jesus darkness that we may be experiencing today right now entrust it to me says jesus concerns we have about the future tomorrow or into the long distant future the clouds seem to be gathering entrust it to me he is lord of the day and he is Lord of the night. Now, verse 31, is the great, greatest of darkness. In this great darkness, now is the Son of Man glorified. So let us pray that we will trust in Jesus as our Master and Lord. Let me pray. These things are written that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life in his name. Oh, Lord, may we believe in Jesus today. Believe him as the Lord of light, the Lord of day, the Lord of darkness, that you are in control, that we would take his hand and walk with him forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we turn to a time of prayer, we're going to confess our sins together. We have admitted that we are weak, that we are sinful, rebellious against our loving Heavenly Father. And so let's confess with this prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. 
we have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. We continue in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, in these difficult days, we continue to pray for our Prime Minister in hospital. We ask that you would bring strength to his body and heal him. Please give wisdom to the doctors caring for him and please comfort his family. We pray again for our nation and the blight of this virus. We ask that you will have mercy and bring it to a swift end, bringing healing to those who are sick and comfort to the bereaved. And in our own weakness and anxiety, as a nation, we pray you'll lift our eyes to you, drawing many to yourself. And give the church boldness in declaring the hope of the gospel. Also, we continue to pray for all medical professionals looking after the sick and vulnerable. Sustain them in the busyness and comfort them in the sadness. In Jesus' name, Amen. And Almighty God, we want to bring before you all those in government, those medical leaders advising them. Uh, please give them the wisdom they need to lead us in this time of crisis. May they be prayerful and know your quiet hand guiding them. And Lord, please give wisdom to our church leaders, giving them a voice that speaks your truth into our society, beckoning them back to you. And Lord, we pray for our church community as we approach Easter. We thank you for your love that you have poured into our hearts. And we thank you that you will love us to the end. And we pray that as we gaze on you and feed from your word this Easter, you will grow us as your children, increase our love for you, and our love would, your love would continue to sustain us and encourage us and would pour out of us, showing us new ways of serving and loving one another. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name and to his glory. Amen. And we're going to say the Collect for Peace together. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.